In the southwest of Uganda lies a thick, dense rainforest and it's home to 600 highly endangered mountain gorillas. Over half of the remaining mountain gorillas on the planet. Breathe, breathe. The Bwindi Impenetrable Forest is one of the most biologically diverse areas in the world. Oh my goodness, you can see the silver mark. They're huge. We're just right behind them, like 20 meters. And this week, not only will we be tracking through it to find these incredible beasts. That was equally the most terrifying and amazing thing I've ever done. I don't know what to say. But we will also be exploring this outstanding country, including its residents whose home they refer to as the Pearl of Africa. We landed in Entebbe and were picked up by our driver Chi Chi from African Overland Tours. Morning all! We've started our tour this morning bright and early, 8pm, not too early, and we've made our way through Entebbe Saturday Market, which is amazing, bustling. There's people everywhere, everyone's laughing, joking, having a really good time. I kind of want to get out and have a shop, my favourite thing to do. We're actually in a queue for a ferry. It's so colourful here and everyone's smiling. Good vibes already. Good vibes. Uganda's cool. All right, so we're just getting out because we've made it to the equator. Now I know what the equator is, but I, what does that mean? Do you know what it means? It's the middle of the year. Yeah, but you can't see it, surely. There's a sign there, let's, that's the equator. Let's mate. go see what we can see. That's right. I never really think about where we are when we do these kind of trips, but we're in the centre of the earth, mate. So if I stand on this side, I'm on the northern hemisphere. But if I stand over here, I'm on the southern he hemisphere. Hemisphere. Hem 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 did you know? So brush your toilets in north it's been clockwise. In south it's been anti-clockwise. Yeah. Equator line. Fill in your two names. Do you need a stiff cut? Yeah. Oh, I feel like I need a stiff cut. Really? Right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's gonna gonna go. On the wall, obviously. You can sell me anything. <laughs> You're going to do a geographic experiment. Northern hemisphere the water spins clockwise. Southern hemisphere the water spins anti-clockwise. So northern hemisphere always whenever brush your toilets, the water spins in a clockwise mode. So in south of the world the water spins in anti-clockwise. No way. So the experiment is about the Coriolis effect. Coriolis effect. As the world is rotating, south pole pulls anti north pole pulls clockwise. So where the forces meet is the equator line. I, I'm baffled. <laughs> <laughs> so now we need to go right at the equator okay. line. At the center, this is what is going to happen at the center of the world. So now we are at the center, the equator line. Where Nothing. No clockwise, no anti, because this is the middle of the whole world. This so is going to do with space. <laughs> <laughs> no, the poles in. The North Pole and the South Pole. Yes, where the forces meet is the equator line. Forces. No. She wasn't listening, that's no, no, her problem. No, I was, I was. She I never was. listened, this one. <laughs> we should probably get a donut while we're here, Craig. We got back in the car and Trevor was extremely excited about her certificate. Uganda is nuts, mate. If you want something, you don't even need to leave your car to buy it. There's fish on the side of the roads, chickens on bikes, pineapples. You'd have to catch them first. And there was even handmade coffins. Just in case. Most people in Uganda don't have access to running water in their homes. Everyone, including children as young as three years old, would be walking to the nearest source of water with plastic containers. After a monster 10 hour drive across the country, we'd finally made it to our accommodation and we had no idea what we were about to wake up to. Morning tour guide. Are you here to drop off my DPT package or are you off to the gold mines? Both. It's a busy day. It's going to be a very busy day. So let's go and get some breakfast. I love your suitcase. Like my sample text. Thanks. And just to let you know, I'm here for all your cash solutions. The guy at breakfast just said, good luck. We're leaving for boat tour. What do you mean by that? What a morning, lads. Surely have a nice time. Would have been a better sentence. I'm back to bed for a minute. Oh, the man's got binoculars, correct? Went into 
tour guide told me last night that we were going on a boat ride at 7am. I thought, what animal is going to be awake at 7am? I understand now why we have to come this early. Because the sun is rising and there's sea otters playing. And there's massive birds that I don't know what are called. Because I don't have my wildlife book. This just wouldn't have been the same if it was later on in the day. It just feels so magic, so special. It's bloody gorgeous. It's even more peaceful now because the engine of the boat died. <laughs> and the boys are just rowing us back instead. <laughs> oh dear, what a lovely surprise as well, you know, when you're just not prepared for something, you get somewhere in the dark, like Amy said, and I woke up this morning, walked out on the balcony, and I was like, wow. I heard you in the bathroom going, wow. So amazing. That was my outfit. So I was now. just saying, <laughs> I got my whole outfit in a local market in Zambia, so the trousers, that fit like a dream, apart from, you know, the overhang. I'm gonna cut off my breathing circulation. Let's just undo the top button. Can you relate? <laughs> top. £1.50. Basically what I'm saying is wait until you get to Africa to buy your safari outfit because it's a lot cheaper and you could look like a G for under a fiver. Sick they are. <laughs> Definitely not sit down trousers. This is one epic drive. It's so mountainous, seeing all the villages, and the people are just waving and smiling. It's just gorgeous, isn't it? We're on the moon cruise. Lady's got a shot, of course, we're going in. <laughs> oh, wow, look at the gorilla. Oh, they're amazing. What are they made from? Is this wood? So I know we haven't seen the gorillas yet, but I'm <laughs> gonna get this little guy, just like for luck. So hopefully tomorrow. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. Oh, yeah. I love it. As we made our way closer to the impenetrable forest, the landscape started to change. The dry and dusty beige fields soon started turning into dense tropical rainforest. It was clear that we were very near. We signed in and were escorted through. What on earth is that? Welcome to our humble abode for this evening. The guy said sometimes the gorillas come up to the balcony, which is mental. <laughs> Hopefully they come later for a coffee. Well, yeah, save us a walk. <laughs> the views out of every window is just all rainforest, which is amazing. Nice big double bed with a mozzie net. And then we've got a little bathroom in here, with a shower and a toilet as well. All right, lads, we've started walking towards the village of the Batwa people. We've actually got two armed guards with us, just in case we come across any gorillas. The rangers are here to protect the people and us. Well, I changed my outfit because I broke my trousers and I got my lunch down my top, so I put different shoes on. Shouldn't have done that. I can't track in them, Craig. So, Batwa are the original inhabitants of the tropical rainforest. They used it to live in the forest and then they live now in this community. Sir, hey. nice to meet you. He says my name is Buchebe. Buchebe is someone who was skilled at digging directly from the ground. We are here with some of the family members. The parents will dance for you. They are all the traditional performances. Hope you find them different from the dances in Wales. What is unique about them is that they dance with passion. They love what they do and it is a way of showing happiness. Ah, ah, so good. Yeah, good. Yeah. It's amazing. What is it? Potato? It's like proper salty potato. It is like a tree house. Get thrown for the Batwa leader. He sits there, he's watching all over the park. <laughs> To sum up that experience, I would say that they're all completely off their rockers. No snoring. <laughs> they were hilarious, really funny people. Don't take themselves too seriously. Proper life lovers, like super happy and like probably the best dancers ever. What a great bunch of people. But they did say that I'm quite a bad dancer and Craig's quite a bad huntsman. Just for the record, this is a wooden animal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, that was worse. So we'd probably never be accepted into the tribe. That's fair enough. Grace got his pants up. <laughs> 46 servings, huh? I'm just not very good at drinking water, so you always have to bring like a little squash to every single country that we go to. Cheers. Cheers, fam. So this evening, ladies and gentlemen, we are actually getting a three-course meal. Starter is uh, something vegetable soup. Didn't quite get what he said.
Oh, come on, oh my god, that is so tasty. <laughs> I want to get it in, but I can't. <laughs> Someone send it. That's super red rum. Try that. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, bro. That is a banger of a soup. It smells spicy. It looks epic. And we've even got a crown on we our rice. Oh, how cute is that? And we've got potatoes, mate. You can't eat them, though. I can. It'll just be a warm night in the bedroom. You'll be sleeping in the van. If you <laughs> And last but not least, my favourite dessert. It's our fruit. To end the night, we were welcomed to Uganda via song and headed to bed early, ready for the big day tomorrow. A big thanks to BetterHelp for being a paid partner of this channel. Mental health should come before anything because it affects everything you do. It's no secret that I myself suffer from anxiety and exploring the world is like my favourite thing to do but it's also one of my biggest triggers. You shouldn't have to like just deal with it or hope that it goes away. Honestly there is help out there and seeing a therapist can change your life like it changed my life. Without my therapist I don't think I'd be able to travel like I do. He's taught me how to live in the moment more and just kind of relax in different situations a bit better. So BetterHelp is an online platform and their mission is to make therapy accessible. This is their important mission because finding a therapist can be hard. There's no scary waiting rooms, there's no awkward face-to-face -face encounters, it's just easy online accessible therapy for whenever you need it. And one of the best parts about BetterHelp is that you can use it anywhere in the world, which is a huge bonus for me. You just fill out a few questions and they will match you to a credentialed therapist in just a few days. And you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions whenever it suits you. Therapy has honestly helped me immensely to sit down with somebody and just have them listen to you and actually understand what you're trying to say is so comforting. Knowing that they're going to give you the right tools and advice to help you move forward in life. I actually really look forward to it every week. So if you're struggling or just feel like you need a little bit of help or somebody to talk to, then please consider a therapist. Don't be scared, just take the leap. Sign up and get yourselves 10% off your first month with the link in our description. Today's the day! What are you laughing at? <laughs> made it to the, the center. I didn't realize this is like a full, like a military operation basically. Loads and loads and loads of rangers, there's armed guards, and you get put into different groups. And basically the trackers have gone out this morning to find out where all the families of gorillas are, which is mad. And then you get put in your group based on your fitness level. So we're apparently the closest. <coughs> That's my fault, sorry about that. <laughs> so we're going to be tracking a group of 12, a family of 12 gorillas, which is mad. There's a group of seven of us. We've got a 40 minute drive now and then we'll start the trek. We're here. So our group looks really, really healthy. A couple of baldies, which I'll probably end up walking with. It's a bit of a meltdown this morning. I didn't really want to talk about it and bring down the, the vibe of the video. I think like challenges like this, physical challenges, really bring out my anxiety. I guess I've just got no self-belief that my body can do it. Mate, just to remind you, you walked across Wales pushing a bin. <laughs> I did, I suppose. It's a mixture of things like early physical activity, heat, and then my body just goes, oh, no. So I get really nervous and my anxiety flares up massively. But I've just got to remember, like, I'm so lucky to be able to do this. All we can do is try our best. Maybe one of the guides has told me that there's trackers in the forest now and our guide will communicate with them the whole time and keep us up to date on how far we'll need to go, etc, etc. But it's still quite early, so it's quite cool. So yeah, we're feeling good. I, I am excited. I just had a small meltdown. I will get over that. He also said that this trek can take anywhere between 30 minutes and six hours. So we're uh, not 100% sure why I'm here. We're not last or anything. I have a question. What do I do if, if they grab me? First of all, when a mountain gorilla charges at you, you don't run, you stand stiff, or you move steps behind you. I think he's just on the phone to the trackers to let us know which way to go. And we move. Breathe, breathe. We're only 
20 minutes in and they're across the jungle from us. Like we can see them, but we're not that close. So the guides have told us we're gonna have to wear a mask if we get any closer because they're gorillas, because they've got the same DNA as us. They can pick up our diseases. <sighs> Here goes Amy getting steamed up. terrifying and amazing thing I've ever done I think. We were literally four foot away from a silver back whilst he was just having a kip and he ripped a massive fart as well which was hilarious. <laughs> just incredible. Even like the smaller ones, he was only like this tall but they're just lumps of muscle. You know that if they just grabbed you they could do some serious damage. And even a little baby walked past me at one point and I was like <laughs> looked her in the eye and she clocked me and then started walking towards me so I just stood on a log and turned the other way. monkey forest and they're like this big and they scare me you come here and they're so massive as soon as i saw the silver back i just started crying it just felt so surreal to see them I, I was just overcome with emotion and the guy was like don't cry don't cry and i was thinking in my head why is he gonna charge me the leader of the pack just like let out a grunt and it was just so deep and powerful I've never experienced anything like this in my life. You can't describe it, you have to do it. You have to come and do this. I was so nervous before I came, my anxiety was at 150%. It's still not quite gone down now, but I had a message this morning of a lady called Debbie. Vicariously, she watches our yeah. travels because she can't go herself. If there's anyone out there that's suffering mentally, physically, and you're not able to like leave your house or go out of the country for any one reason, this video is dedicated to you guys. We got so lucky as well that sometimes you can track for like two or three hours before you see them. Literally 20 minutes, as soon as we got into the forest, the silverback was like there. We basically just followed them for an hour. Unbelievable. Not too strenuous. It's doable. If Trev can do it, you can do it. Go on, Trev. And now time for my favourite part. Certificate time. On behalf of Uganda Wildlife Authority, I would like to thank you so much for supporting the rural conservation. So I want to give you a souvenir, a certificate. Craig. Thank you so Congratulations, much. Ami. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pheasant. We made our way back to the van, drank our weight in mango juice, and headed to our accommodation for this evening to reflect on what we had just experienced. So this is the Njojo Lodge. James, the bar manager, was just telling us that there's elephants everywhere, and I'm so glad we're back in like country i can't wait so not only are we seeing gorillas today but we're also going on a game drive later this evening for sunset which is gonna be amazing it's gonna be so nice to actually just like sit back relax have somebody take us fingers crossed we see a lion because we haven't seen a lion yet in africa so this is our room it's humongous we have two extra beds if anyone wants to come and stay with us love a good mozzie nest tall ceilings huge shut up we got an outdoor shower oh that's so nice I need a shower more than life right You haven't now. showered for about three days now. I actually haven't, no. You're starting to stink. Lots of places don't have hot water and I haven't wanted to risk a cold one, but I'm boiling today, so I'm ready. That shower's gonna get got. The water will come down and then it'll go back up because it smells so bad. <laughs> All right, lads, we're back, looking fresh. We've washed, we've napped, we've outdoor showered, and now we're gonna go on a game drive. This place is just amazing. I just sat out there for ages, listening to all the sounds. It feels so good to be clean, honestly. I just feel like we've been treated like celebrities the whole way around Africa, yeah, no well. matter what. Like, we've got the best room, people carry our bags to the room, which is mad. I'm just like, give it to me, like, don't you don't need to carry it, kind of thing. So far, this itinerary has just been 
yeah. precious as well. So if you want to book this exact one, we'll leave a link in the description for you. You've got to do it. Uganda is unbelievable. unbelievable. Like we get a vibe every time we come to a country. And as soon as we got here, we're just like, the vibes are high here. Yeah. Like everybody waves, everybody's stoked to see you. Everybody welcomes you. Like we had a guy singing to us on his guitar last night, saying how happy he was that we were in his country. Imagine that in Wales. You'd <laughs> never get that. Our van's are convertible. We're going full safari mode. We started off with some smaller fellas chilling around the park then we saw this dribbler a couple more antelopey things and then what we came for an elephant <laughs> then before we could blink the heavens opened Oh, my knickers are soaking. Oh. Come on, Trevor. Yeah, I'm not Time to get up. Today. What time is it? Time you got up. I mean, it's lovely being out in nature and hearing all the noises and stuff. But will you shut up? <laughs> on the road after you sir it's such a gent honestly this place is just nuts like you wake up elephants just after breakfast and you jump in your van and you get chauffeured through a national park just to get to your next accommodation you just see all the animals in the world just on a regular daily basis if you love animals as much as me, definitely put Uganda or, or just Africa in general on the top of your list. Unnervingly, Chi Chi brought us to um, a market. So Trev's... Get your purse out, Craig. We go in shopping. Okay, I realise I don't have any room, much room... You can buy one hat. ...in my suitcase. So I can buy... Or a key ring. ...a suitcase. My first purchase, I've got three bracelets and two little wooden rings. Seen you come in, didn't you? Craig's trying to get a hard bargain, but I'm just like, yes, fine, whatever, I don't care. Give me the jewelry. Next stop, Boat Safari Cruise. Ronaldo says that there's over 9,000 hippos in this channel. Oh my gosh. I want to see little ears flapping. We're about three minutes in and already it's better in my life. It's just to see something that like you just don't ever see, like hippopotamuses. <laughs> There's so many of them, and there's an elephant in the water. Look how close we are. So, it turns out hip hippos are the most dangerous mammals on the planet and they kill more humans than any other mammal, which is crazy. And Ronaldo told us there's two different ways that it happens here. One of the ways is unlicensed small wooden fishing boats, which they'll sometimes overturn. And then the other way is when the, the fishermen are set in their fishing lines and sometimes they'll swim to set them and then just get eaten by a hippo. But it's always in water, yeah. They've never recorded one here on land. Imagine that. Just when we thought Africa couldn't get any better. We saw a huge family of elephants just playing, washing and drinking right in front of us. We've done this boat cruise and seen so many hippos and so many elephants. I can't actually believe how close we are. So this is school. The hippopotamuses. They live in big families like this, Ronaldo says. And if I could, I would just plop right in the middle. Give everyone like little back massages. I just want to touch it, but absolutely not. I believe they can turn the ears 360 degrees. <laughs> you don't think you're going to see it in real life. Like you see it on the nature programs and stuff. And you're like, wow, I'd love to see that. You come here and it's, it's real. So you can actually go on a boat and just sit and watch a family of elephants drinking and playing. And you see that they use each other as pillows, that's why they're all huddled together. Ronaldo says that their heads are so heavy that they need something to rest it on, so they just rest it on each other. That's why they're so close. So this is the water thickly bird, and apparently they're really good friends with crocodiles, because whenever a crocodile's just had a meal, the bird will go in and pick all the food out of his teeth. So he's like a little toothbrush.
just arrived at our next lodge and uh, Chi Chi's just told us that at this lodge hippos and elephants can sometimes be seen walking around the grounds. Africa, just what an adventure. Just had a briefing because of the animals and how they just kind of roam freely. Crocodiles, hippos, elephants. They said you can walk around but when it gets dark your movements are restricted. So they said if you want to come up we'll get send guards down to get you, bring you up for dinner and then when you finish with your dinner they'll escort you back to your room. And also he said lions and hyenas have been spotted which is mad. So we're in the crocodile room which looks really cool. You can see hippos from our room. Welcome to the crocodile room. So this is like a, I guess a traditional like safari lodge tent. It kind of feels like you're outside, but you have like the safety of being inside. This is the view from our little balcony. Very gorgeous. View in chairs. Four poster beds. Beautiful. Lovely like African decor. Follow me through to the bathroom. Outdoor, indoor living. Flushable toilet, which I still find is mental because we're in the middle of nowhere basically. The special part is out the back. Bubble shower flower. I'll be back in an hour. Outdoor shower, which I love. Where are you, you little buggers? There's nothing quite like laying in bed, hearing the hippos roaring outside. <laughs> I wouldn't say roaring, I'd say grunting and farting. It's not much different to how I usually wake up, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I am 98% hippo, like Craig is 98% gorilla. Oh, it's just unbelievable though. Africa is just absolutely amazing. I know, if we can't see it enough. Get it on the list. I can hear him, but I can't see him. Thank goodness, because they chomped me. We spent an incredible four days exploring Uganda's best bits. Even though this was a whistle-stop tour, it was one of the most immersive and exciting adventures of our lives. And if you want to do the same itinerary, we will leave their link in the description. A massive thank you to African Overland Tours for arranging it all. Speaking with one of the rangers after the gorilla trek, they told me that you were still able to do this if you had a disability or were limited in any way. One lady that that wasn't in our group who was in a wheelchair was actually put onto a stretcher and carried down into the forest by the rangers to see the family of gorillas. Just believe you can and you're halfway there.